when he spots that, when his blacky senses go off, he turns into a super villain. He jumps through the window to get jumping. through the garbage truck. And, 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 and what happens with this guy? I don't know, but they make a big deal about it. Like I'm just trying to do my job. Leave me alone. <laughs> Every time I show this trailer for this movie, White Dog to People, I get two reactions from them. The man who owned it, how did he turn him into a racist dog? It's simple. Find a black wino who desperately needs a drink for a fix. <laughs> Your people, they either respond with, Man, I remember seeing that on TV when I was a kid. I remember seeing it on HBO or something. And the other response is, what the actual f That's me. <laughs> not WTF, not what the f What the actual f Put that A in there. Yes. <laughs> is this. You mean, it's a, seriously, a racist dog and he is actually white. It helps. It helps. <laughs> it's funny. It's like, a, it's like a clan hood with fangs. <laughs> and there's a dog right here. I mean, if you're if you're training racist dogs, the white ones are the ones that people are going to pick up. Yeah, I mean, but nothing else. It's it's, it's a good visual. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's consistent. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like if you took Cujo and he just hated black people, you know, <laughs> they turn him white. That'd be a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, to get the message across. Yeah, that's right. Can't have a self-hating black dog in there. Nah, <laughs> Come on. It's contradictory. Plus, he probably matches with most of your wardrobe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I gave some homework to Mr. Juicy Herman over here and Martin Thomas, who I thought maybe, just maybe he had seen this before. I have seen this when I was a kid, but it's been years since I've seen it. I don't even think I've seen the whole movie. I think I just caught it in bits and pieces mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, let's go ahead and get into White Dog. Now, we did a viewing party for this this past Friday, which is why I'm bringing it up, because I'm thinking, you know what? This is a very interesting film. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not one like Tam the T Rex. We did we we did do a review of Tam the T Rex, but right. this is something that we can just sit back and actually have a discussion about. Mm -hmm. It's not just sure. anything to just laugh at. I was actually surprised. Dissect it. Yeah, yeah, to go in as much uh, as 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 much whether we like the movie or not, just uh, as as much conversation we can pull from this about mm -hmm. social issues of that time and even today, uh, mainly that of racism. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer for White Dog, or at least the rest of it, and we'll be back with our review. That's a white dog. Of course he's a white dog. So like, yeah, I see that. <laughs> it's a racist white dog. You, know, you don't think I noticed that? I'm yeah, just preference it taking that. chunks out of black people. You don't think I know that? <laughs> yeah, he hasn't attacked me yet. Yeah, yeah, I know it's a white dog. <laughs> shit. <laughs> that is Boy, that was a black shit, Mo. You said <laughs> shit. <laughs> Well, he turned heels quick, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're laughing. I've been in that situation before. Shit, yeah. <laughs> man, here's the funny thing. A lot of black people have been in that situation where they've just been chased by a random dog. The dog is yeah. always racist. Black people just get dogs and just leave them anywhere. <laughs> no dogs just... They, they, when they see somebody running like a little black kid, our kid in general, and they would chase that son of a they bitch, They really man. do, yeah. yeah. I think it's a toy. Yeah. Or, we, or in black neighborhoods, when you've been on your bicycles, dogs have just ran out after this man. those tires. <laughs> yeah. Robber, robber, robber. Put a bullet in that son of a bitch. Then why the hell didn't you? Because there's still a chance to cure him. Because <laughs> he said he'd kill me. <laughs> 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 Pull the trigger, I dare you. You better kill me. <laughs> dead. You hear me? As soon as it comes off, you're dead. You black son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Do I look like I'm smiling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll never be cured. I'll always hate your kind. You know, this film right here is not seen by a lot of people. And the reason why it's, it's considered a, a, a cult and even a cult classic mm -hmm. is because this movie was so controversial before it was even shot. That's right. You know, the, before they even like, the, before they... Uh, before they shot a frame of film for this movie, it was already murked, uh, mired in contro controversy. Um, the source material that it's from is even controversial. It's based on a book, White yeah. Dog, written by a Jewish guy. It was a, in, in this one, it was about a white dog that was reprogrammed to like black people, but then to hate white people. <laughs> 
the guy that was training him in the book was a militant black man who came in and was like, yeah, I'll help you. I'll help, I'll help reprogram your dog. And then, you know, then he's like, yeah, he don't, he don't like, uh, yeah, he loves black people now, mm-hmm. but he hates you. Sick him! But the whites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, make, they even make the book like a horror movie. That's like a you scary got, cover, man. That's yeah. a good cover. I like it. It's like it got, looks like he's turning into a werewolf. It look, yeah. yeah. It looks like the like the like uh, like a black man fused with a werewolf. Yeah, it's like the thing right. or something. Like the, like the fly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, so that was controversial. And they even said, yeah, you, look, we can't do that. We can't make this movie, you know. We well, we can have and kill black people, though. Yeah, <laughs> sure can. Yeah. Quick, I just will eat that up. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> just like the black people in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what they were saying, you know, we don't want we don't want any controversy with this. There's already a lot of controversy going on with race and movies at the time in sure. 1981. It was changing, and that was kind of changing when they got Roman Polanski on board to direct this. <laughs> but Roman Polanski, he had to. Do a quick trip to France, and some reason he never came back. Yeah. <laughs> Long vacation, yeah, extended vacation. Yeah, he had a lot of pressing business overseas. <laughs> business still pressing today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but once he was out, they was they were saying, "All right, well, movie's kind of finished." Until they had a writers' strike, a writers the, the writers and directors guild strike in 1981, mm-hmm. and so they just said, "Fuck, man, we got to just get some kind of projects out there." And this was one of the projects that they could fast track. And they got Samuel Fuller to come in and direct this because Samuel Fuller, first of all, they said uh, this is this guy already has a treatment ready. He's ready to go. He can. He's a, look. This guy's a pro. He can get it done mm-hmm. in, on budget and on time. Probably under budget and quicker than the schedule that we got. And they told him. They said, "Hey, look. The reason why we're really doing this is because we don't want all that. You know, we're looking for." We're looking for Jaws with Paws, is what they said. <laughs> Very accurate. Yeah, it was. Uh, this is kind of right after uh, Jaws came out. Saying, We're looking for our own kind of killer animal movie mm-hmm. from a from a, a great director. So, do that. Make a horror movie with a killer dog. You know, I, you know, we'll see what you can do with it. But uh, all that race shit in there, uh, yeah, don't, don't don't put that in there. We don't need that. And he's like, yeah, okay, yeah. You know what? Fuck that. I'm putting all that racism in there. Mm-hmm. Pouring it all in there. Put all, put, put all that racism back in. Turns out that Samuel Fuller was a big in, uh, integrationist. Oh, okay. He was always trying to find ways to, to uh, give black people roles mm-hmm. that were non-stereotypical. Uh, so he made this movie where he made all the black people stereotypical. <laughs> Where, where they get to be dog food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the studio, they looked, they looked, they looked at the... Uh, they went to. They saw a screening of this, yeah, and they and they trusted Sam Fuller enough to be like, okay, you just do what you want to do. Hey, hey, baby, booby, we'll see, we'll see. Hey, we'll see <laughs> the, we'll see. We don't even look, need to look at the dailies. We'll see it when it's done. And they went to a screening of this, and they were like, God damn it, <laughs> <laughs> Sam, <laughs> mother, we told what? you not to put that racism <laughs> shit in here. We told you, man, Lights won't like that. <laughs> and and the guy and Samuel Fuller even said, you know what? He, he said, all right, y'all do what you want to. I can't help it if you're afraid of the Klan offending the white racists out there. And he just kind of just gave up on them. Not he didn't give up on the project, but he's like, what can I do? That's what it I'm is. upset. I'm pissed off. This is a very, very uh, poignant movie with a, with a, in my opinion, what he said, a great anti-racist message. And you guys don't want to release it? Fine. That's fine. That's on you. You don't, you don't want to enlighten the people because you're scared of the truth. That dogs can be racist too. <laughs> they released it in limited areas. I think they released it in France. Yeah, it, yeah, that was like its big release. Its big release. They had a screen in Detroit, I think. Yeah, it was, Detroit. It was released in a very, very, very small distribution yeah, in, in Detroit here in the states. Mm-hmm. But it, it was shown over in France and uh, and shown over in I think Germany too. And you know, you know them. It was like oh, oh, so deep, uh huh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so profound, uh huh. It's very racist. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> How does it work today? Did did Samuel Fuller actually succeed at making a movie with a with with a very profound anti racist message? Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys to answer for your own. But uh, for me, yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, you got to take that with understanding the criticism from black audiences at the time that were kind of divided on this, especially the NAACP that were arguing about black depictions. Uh, and black people behind the camera in Hollywood. So with this, and I understand it, man, because I, I say this all the time myself. With this, they were saying that, 
you know, there are other works by black people out there about racism with a less sort of B-movie or exploitation approach. And so uh, they were, you know, they, some people argued on behalf of the movie and some people said, yeah, it still doesn't work. Uh, the reason why I think this works is because the, uh, this is coming from the unique approach of having the point of view of the dog. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm making this from, making it from the dog's POV from a lot of the movie. Puts the you know the audience at odds with their with their feelings about the main character. You know, this deadly racist dog. You know, uh, uh, it puts a message out there that racism is learned, or programmed into a mindset. But you're also torn between feeling sorry for this dog, not so much because he's a racist, but because it's crazy. He's insane. He's been conditioned to be that way. The more they try to deprogram him or train him, the crazy it makes him. Mm-hmm. This dog is, he's looking at life. He's like, Jesus, it used to be literally so black and white before. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say in the film. <laughs> he's like, it was easy before. White, cool, black, <laughs> you know, it was easy. Yeah. But now, I, I don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, and there are moments in the movie where you see, you see the dog, man. And you just you just feel bad for like they're trying to train him, and you can just see his brain just just short circuiting, like he's so confused he don't know what to be mad. He just growling at the air, <sighs> and you're like Jesus, man, this poor dog. The dog's actually a very good actor in the film. It's five uh, different yeah. dogs too. Yeah, it's oh, five okay, different dogs. Yeah. That's why. Probably <laughs> like, like they got scenes. The, the Jackson Five of white dogs <laughs> to be in this movie, man. They trained it very well. Trained all of them very well. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, th- how they found five white German shepherds that look alike is amazing. Yeah, yeah. they must have been brothers. Ne- never, never questioned. That yeah, it was different. No, nah, man, no. Nah. Uh, and you can see at moments right here where the, when they train the dog, like the <laughs> the dog is a great actor. All of them. Yeah. The dog conveys conf- confusion very well. What, what do I do? What's my line? <laughs> You're like, God damn, I hate blacks, but I sure want that quarter pounder right there. <laughs> I'm see, confused. Like the whole hand. I don't know. It all at once. Do, I, do I eat the black man? Do I eat the burger? I don't know. <laughs> I want both. I want a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of that zest of that burger. Yeah, this ain't Burger King. I can't have it my way. Right <laughs> yeah, man. It's like watching a Frankenstein monster, man. It's, it's, and it's, he's learning over and time. And he's learning. It's a world he doesn't know anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and a world that he doesn't recognize. Now he's being deprogrammed, man. Yeah. I, I don't Somebody, shut up. Somebody chest and hamburger. <laughs> it's going constantly back and forth. And in the, the day, I, I like it and I like the message, but it's thoroughly ridiculous throughout. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, yeah. It, it's, it's so over the top, but then it gets very serious and it goes back and forth that I almost have like a, 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 like, a like a shock every time it, yeah. it, it gets grounded again. One by one, they're laying out the reasons why this is not going to work. You got to get rid of this dog. And I felt this movie, it, uh, I mean, it does end up having an anti racist, you know, uh, theme uh, sentiment to it. Uh, and I know that's what it's the, the goal the whole time. But I felt like it was a racist movie in a way that it didn't seem to know it was in that this movie consistently places the life of black people underneath that of a dog. Because yeah. it's, it's not like the dog's just attacking people. It is murdering people. But it's such a but we got to save this dog. No. Yeah. I, I agree with you, Martin. There's a, I mean, we'll go into it more, but there's a moment in this film where I'm like, okay, you, any sympathy I had for this animal, which I bet that really in the first 15 minutes, you shouldn't have any sympathy for it, but especially later on and how the other characters just like, they're just culpable. And it's just like, there yeah. is no ramifications for that. It. It's like, yeah. that is bullshit. And these, these victims, they have, they have families. Yeah. So, yeah. So, some, you know, parents, siblings, <laughs> uh, children. But it's like, I know, but we got to save this dog. Got, no. Yeah. It's rough. Everybody, what, what, is everybody here retarded? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. There's a point where he's a murder machine. And this is, can't, you can't have this in this society. It really is this underlying message of those Negroes, we got to save this dog. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it is there. I'm not, I'm not mad at the movie. I'm, I'm not. I mean, I know it's, well, it, it, it's, it's, it's a move of its time. And even Paul Winfield. Look, I like Paul Winfield. Paul Winfield, the reason why... Uh, Paul Winfield's so good for the movie. Not because he's just a great actor, because he right. is. Uh, he is. But he's in the role where he's, he's, for a while, he's on both sides of the audience for you know that time that you can. Unless you were that person that just roots with the dog the whole movie. I was not, really. But, hmm. uh, but you know, he's that guy that is like torn. He's like, I want to, 
I want to kill this dog so bad, but you know, I, I'm trying to understand this dog. If they had put that a little bit better way, then that, that might be understandable. Uh, <laughs> But I don't understand what his project is with his dog. But he's very good. And Paul Winfield would even be... A, he, he comes from a time that reflects what this movie is about. Yeah. Paul Winfield... One, an, another thing that's great about Paul Winfield being in this movie is that he doesn't die. For a movie about a dog sure. that kills uh, black people, he doesn't right. die. He's because the one that gets away. Paul Winfield used to die in almost every really? movie he was yeah. in. Mm. Yeah, be, be, before we had Ned Stark, <laughs> before we had that actor, Paul Winfield <laughs> Paul was the guy Winfield, died in every movie. Paul Winfield has been played by, he's been killed by bees. He's been killed by killer mutant cockroaches. Oh. Uh, there's, there was a, I, I know he was relieved when he said, oh, look, I'm playing Martin Luther King. Oh, f***. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing, he played Martin Luther King. You know, when, when, yeah. with that. Uh, he was in Star Trek when 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 things. Oh. It's funny because when he wasn't killed by other animals or other forces, he just said, "You know what? I'll just kill myself." <laughs> that wasn't even in the script. <laughs> it's, it's like he just went, "Well, I know how this is." I just oh, assumed. <laughs> wow. And his ass go outside like the Wicked Witch. He's like, ah! well, check off. He's he's doing just fine. <laughs> He's a, I actually liked him in the movie. I saw because he's such a great actor. Mm -hmm. I even I thought he kind of transcended the, even the goofy material, and it is goofy. Oh, yeah, some of the shit he has to say. Yeah, yeah. I no, to, I, and I was with him for yeah. a while. But there's a point where I was. I like, wanted right, to put a bullet in that head. Stand up. And what did he say? I wanted to put a bullet in that son of a bitch. But <laughs> we've got to cure racism. <laughs> get the, get, get it, uh, bro lies about it. I'm like, give me this. Go, bam! Everybody, get back, get back to work. I'll stop all this well, bullshit, man. There's it. He's died so times, so so many times in movies. Paul Winfield, he's died so much that you can even buy props of his of his seven oh head. My oh my god! No. <laughs> you can buy props of when he's dead. Hey man, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what oh. killed him there. <laughs> Apparently, the dentist pulled out his teeth up. <laughs> There's probably a warehouse full of those. Yeah, yeah Paul Winfield body parts. <laughs> People are like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Open wide, here comes the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> Ma. Psych, it's a bullet. <laughs> as, a, as a cult classic, and you're kind of a cinema person, or a cinema snob, a cinephile, whatever, uh, there are moments in here where they drop, to, they, they, they drop hints of how people just kind of Hated Star Wars for becoming the phenomena oh that it God, is. Oh yeah. a whole moment. <laughs> Burl lives. He that he says, I hate that motherfucker R D R two D two. He <laughs> That's the enemy. <laughs> not Star Wars. Not Han Solo. But he said that fucking robot right there. He's taking away the jobs from the abused animals. Here. Yeah. <laughs> that that R two D two is to Burl lives like uh, Mexicans are to MAGA people and yes. Trump supporters. Yeah. <laughs> They're taking everything. Let me tell you about problem. That is the enemy. Got your ass. <laughs> Put that twirl in there like, yeah, you baby. Nailed it. That showed him. <laughs> yeah, take that. He really did have that twirl. <laughs> you said, did you know he did that twirl? Like, he had that swag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he that was a dance move. You said that shit. <laughs> you like that shit? <laughs> it's good, right? <laughs> he let R2 have it. Then he said, he went around like Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, did I did love Burl Ives in this movie <laughs> take that you little matter fuck you know, he's the only person talking sense he's the one the guy time. talking sense in the movie he's like the moment Yo they bring that dog in he's like kill him mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's a white dog get, get well, him until, the fuck it, out of here until he's not until he doesn't anymore yeah, well, until right. he gives up. Yeah, until he's like, all right, whatever. He's like, all right, you know, y'all find out. He's cured. <laughs> he's worked. He's like, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Is he cured? Yeah, sure. Black people are safe. Hurrah. <laughs> Juneteenth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's good. Right? He's cured. Oh, between this and freeing the slaves, what a glorious day. Damn. Yes. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> everybody else, well, not really everybody else, but one in particular, your main character, Christy Matt Nichols, plays the the, the girl who yeah. finds this dog, and boy, she, is she stupid. Yeah, she's oh stupid yeah. stupid as she's Christy Nichols. So big, naive. Yeah, big teen actress from the, uh, from the 70s. Mm. Had a little bit of notoriety going on to the uh, 80s. Uh, didn't really hear about it too much in the 90s, <laughs> you know, not today. She, oh, she, 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 uh, she quit. Did she quit oh. acting? Wow. Yeah. 
Still looks good yeah, she, today, too. She quit. She said she wanted to just live a, a normal life. I wish her character was as smart as she was in real life then, because that character is just stupid. Character is fucking dumb. Yeah. Uh, like, she starts out with a boyfriend that I hate until he starts talking sense to her. The him. boyfriend is actually cool. Nah, I, I disagree. I, I I did not like the way he was talking down her. Well, maybe kind of. No, maybe maybe it's it's part of the character because like she she's I mean she's a struggling actress. That's what she is, and he constantly talks down her. And I guess it plays into her character why she's so naive, and that's why she feels the way she does about the dog because she can't like actually make a competent decision in the movie. <laughs> so maybe that plays into it. But I did not I, you like know the boyfriend. What? I liked him because apparently she was not that great of an actress. People just turn her hands down left and right, and he was you know he was trying to be nice, and then finally comes right to the dog. He's like. The is wrong with you? This dog is crazy, <laughs> and I'm white. You know, I'm telling, you know dog. He wants to eat me. <laughs> yeah. You know, at the, he was telling her the dog is insane. He was actually one of the few that was trying to t- tell us talk some sense to her. But that's the thing about her, man. Everybody is telling her from the moment she's got this dog. Everybody saying this dog is insane. You've got to d- not get rid of this dog. You have to destroy this dog. Not euthanize. Not put down. You have to kill this dog. And she's pulling that shit. He's my friend. <laughs> you know, he saved me once. He's, he's good. We can make it happen. It'll work. I'm telling you. Even though she's seen... Man, seen the dog eat her best she's, friend. She's, been on a, she's, <laughs> she's on a set where she saw the dog. The dog broke out of a wall to eat her black friend. <laughs> okay, she did kind of say... You know? Yeah, yeah. She's like, she's like, mm, that's what you gonna do. Yeah. Mm. I like the way that dog looked at her and said, "Shit, you ain't passing. Out. You don't. You ain't fooling nobody with that light skin." <laughs> Come here, you mulatto motherfucker. And she's like, "Oh, she'll be all right." <laughs> I, I gotta say, man, I'm actually glad you brought up this scene. But look, the dog is a great actor in the film, but they do a really bad job of showing these maulings because it's they like do. the dog is just kind of mouthing these people. It's not, yeah. it's not that great. Like, and they show like later. It's like, oh, their backs all ripped open. But it's like I saw what you showed me. That that was not the case. Yeah, they, they got some peanut butter yeah. under the collar. They, they put a, they, yeah, but they put a pork chop under their coat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, ain't no uh, yeah. yeah. It makes oh, me wonder God. why they had five dogs. Maybe the first couple just weren't good at the maulings and they got some later. <laughs> yeah. it's like, all right, this dog's really into it. He knows how to do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. they found the one that actually was racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Used it for scenes one. like this. Yeah. Wait a minute, he's running. He's, he's eating me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you got five German shepherds, one's got to be. <laughs> one's gonna hate somebody. <laughs> yeah, that dog is like, I hate this coat. <laughs> yeah, uh, and somebody chats. I hope my shoulder pads. <laughs> That's literally what he was chewing on. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. The moments where it gets uh, where it gets stupid is uh, uh, when they had this rape scene going on out of nowhere, oh, and yeah. the way it ends is. <laughs> yeah, you know, because yeah. that's the thing. She's she's she she's she's bonded with the dog too because the dogs the dog saved her from this grease ass rapist right here. <laughs> there was a moment where the rapist thought he got away. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> like he like the dog got like he got attacked by the dog and the rapist and the, and the rapist is like, you know what, f- this I'm out. Yeah. Shit, I don't. This ain't worth it. <laughs> yeah. F- <laughs> You'll never get me now, and that dog said, "Bullshit! If I can see your ass, I can get you." <laughs> the power of racism. <laughs> I was like, you know what? That was kind of funny to me. He thought he got away. <laughs> Look, I, I would never condone what happened. I'm not. I never say she deserved it, but she did some stupid shit. She, not only did she leave the door open. And I think she might even left the door wide open if we see what she did later. But she left she left it open with the TV playing loud as fuck. Loud. She, yeah. she ain't even watching it. She had this shit playing loud, so loud that the dog can't even hear when the rapist comes in the room and help out. The dog don't hear shit. Twice as loud as the dog. He's like, oh, oh Jesus <laughs> Christ, so loud. God, yeah, God. dog can't hear shit. Traumatized. And I right. know the, the rapist got sensitive hearing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah exactly. I know the rapist is in the living room. He's like, you got to be kidding me. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that this should happen, but I mean. These are the circumstances I've always wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with the rape. <laughs> I mean, you did pull in the right, the right rape ingredients. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying, but you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> she didn't learn a f-ing thing. You see, after she, after, she, after she has this attempted rape, because she left her door, her door open, does she learn? No, she don't learn a f-ing thing. Give me the place. 
Please. What have I said about this goddamn dog? (laughs) Unless the dog found the key under the mat or rock, she left that door wide open for that dog to come in. Her family doesn't believe in locks. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, nah, nah, everyone can, the world is free. Come in. Yeah. See, she's going on that white logic, you know? It's safe. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to pull it up because after the whole thing with the attempted rape and the, the dog and the rapist is tussling outside. She's on the floor. The phone's off the hook away. The receiver's away from the phone. And she's like yelling across the room, 911, I need the police right away. It's like, wait, so who dialed? Yeah, this, the, listen to this. Not, you know, nobody would actually be calling 911 like this. They'd be getting up on the, you know, like, help, 911. She's on the ground. 911, please help me. Her cadence is weird. <laughs> yeah. I better give me the police. <laughs> <laughs> she Jesus. relaxed as yeah. <laughs> She forgot to how to use her legs, as I guess. If, it was as if the rapist went in and hit 911 and just left the receiver off. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, well, that's not even her, man. That's a, right. that's a body double that on, stunt on, double. on the floor. That's a stunt double. That's a phone double on the floor. Operator, give me the police. <laughs> That shit looks like a one of those um, uh, uh, life alert commercials. Yes, it does. <laughs> I fall and I, I can't, can't get up. up. <laughs> My dog's killing him though. <laughs> He's eating him outside. <laughs> and the police is picking up. I don't know if this is meant to be funny. It's like, ah, oh, same rapist from last year. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, are you serious? <laughs> You let this guy out. <laughs> he's, he's raping. And it's the Hollywood Hills. She lives. How is this struggling actress survive in the Hollywood Hills? I, and they, yeah. they let you know she I was working. Like, I was wondering how she could afford that. Doesn't place. make any sense. Unless her boyfriend's paying for the place. Yeah, know. yeah. Probably so. He's like a script writer. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's why like the director's house. Yeah. A career. Mm-hmm. yeah. And not only did they say, uh, Ah, same papers from last year, but they also said, "Okay, we're gonna read your rights." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear any rights read. <laughs> he was dragging them. We're away. gonna put you in handcuffs. We're gonna put you in the car. We're gonna drive you to the station. <laughs> <laughs> they just saying everything they do in that job. Yeah. For all of, like I said, for all of uh, Fuller's talk about not putting, uh, about not putting non-stereotypical, uh, or putting black people in non-stereotypical roles, he put. Everybody in here in stereotypical black roles. Uh, Paul Winfield, who was smooth and a lot of people don't realize to this day he's dead, but he was he was gay, right? And he came from that age where he couldn't come out of the closet. Sure, sure. In fact, he was married to Cicely Tyson at one time. Mm. Uh, you know, it, he's the one guy in here who has a really good part, a non stereotypical part. Uh, if you're not Paul Winfield in the movie, your dog food. <laughs> they must. <laughs> If you're not, if you're not, if you're black and you're not this man right here, Paul Winfield, they might as well put your ass in a can of Alpo and feed the dog. <laughs> you know, the, the, it's dog food or almost dog food, almost yeah. dog man. You know what? It, there's because the, here's the thing with the film when it comes to the, to 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 black people, they're doing what Sam Fuller says he doesn't want to do in movies. I guess he figured, well, look, I gave one black dude a good part. Shut the fuck up. What do you want me to do? <laughs> but he, you know. It, this is like a horror movie where all the black people die. And it's not a matter of even dying first. It's a matter of just dying and no one gives a shit. Yeah, that, yeah. that, that was the thing. There's no repercussions. Yeah. And Martin was right earlier, man. You know, no one gives a shit about the fate of whatever happened to these black people. These black men. If you're a black man, if you're a black woman, you're just going to get tore up. But if you're a black man, <laughs> your ass is gone. And, and it would be different if these weren't like spectacular... Uh, uh, the the most spectacular death. Death. These are like set. These no are mo- no reference to later. No set pieces. Yeah. yeah, these are these 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 are spectacular set piece deaths right here. Especially where the, the first movie one. stops. Action scene. This some like this is some goddamn Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator shit that goes uh-huh. on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The dog. What I love about the dog is so racist. That even at night he's just looking for black people and he spots one <laughs> like he's. He's walking the neighborhood, and he somehow, with his his blacky sense, he's <laughs> he's able to like spot a black man driving a garbage truck. Mm-hmm. At yeah, he night. can see through steel. <laughs> through he look, he's he's got X ray vision for black people, and when he spots that, when his blacky senses go off, he turns into a super villain. He oh, yeah. jumps through the window to get jumping. through the garbage truck, and 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 and. 
What happens with this guy? I don't know, but they make a big deal about it. I feel like I'm just trying to do my job. Leave me alone. <laughs> I got one more route. <laughs> get, get, get off me. <laughs> I tell you, that dude, that man, I tell you, that, that dude didn't go out like no punk, though. He did spectacular. No, that he dude. Tried. Had, that dude, no, he had a, if he, I don't know if he's, that's the thing. I don't know if this dude is dead. I don't know. I think it's kind of. You think it? Because I can't. They yeah. never say anything uh, no, about no, it. No, there's no. But yeah. I know that said, look, if I got to go out, I'm going to go out fighting this bitch. And if I die, I'm going to cause one of the biggest action scenes <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> well, I'm my a, job's here, though. <laughs> yeah, my job's done. <laughs> and that is that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I took out the garbage. <laughs> And the, I mean, the dog super smart. The dog knew when he got the car because oh yeah, yeah. the dog knew. That dog said because that dog was eating that motherfucker like, oh shit, he's about to hit this goddamn stove. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> his name might as well have been Sarah Connor. He said his name might as well have been Sarah Connor. <laughs> <laughs> now I was waiting for the couple air. That's what I said. We were watching. Yeah. I was like, come on, please, please. It's the eighties. Come on, yeah, yeah. kaboom. Not uh, now. And it probably did, but they just left yeah. too early. You know, <laughs> keep in mind, you had a garbage truck hit a department store mm -hmm. and trashed that shit in the middle of the night. But because a black man was driving the truck, ah, no news here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? Okay. laughs> the city, the city missed that truck more than it did the driver. I don't think I've ever seen a film where there were no one, there was no one on the streets. Except no one on the one street. black guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I call out animation for doing that all the time. And yeah, here, I like I've never seen a movie do it to this degree. That's a, somebody's. That's a street sweeper. Yeah, yeah. street oh, yeah, sweeper. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah, the dog kills him, murders a man, causes a a, a a store to be destroyed. Goes home, covered, soaked in blood. Anybody say anything? No, nope. business as usual. You scared the shit out of me, you little shit. Come here, you little oh, scam. Oh, you don't notice the blood? That, that <laughs> she don't, she don't say shit. Get, no, is, that, is that jam? What is that? Is that strawberry? It's all about it. No, it smells so sweet. Okay, after missing, the dog comes back bloody. You think you would take your dog to the vet just to find out. But I, it just remind, reminded me of the early scene when she went to the vet and how shitty they were. They were comical almost. It was like, yeah. I feel like I was watching laughing. Yeah. No, they, yeah, they, they, they didn't give a shit. One well, couldn't even speak English very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what'd you say? What? Why did you get that dog? Yes. But we we'll take the dog to pound. We put, uh, put to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> well, you brought him in here. You got to pay for him. <laughs> yuck, this, yuck. Yeah, this off, woman, off, telling us. <laughs> right. This, you, you don't come in here covered in this much blood unless you killed a fucking human being. I mean, even if it was an animal, yeah. you want to be like, like, what? You know, what animal did you fucking kill that this was that that was this big? And by the way, they just told you that this dog does not like black people, so it might be a hint that this dog murdered a black man. <laughs> you might want to investigate, but nobody, nobody follows nobody. up on that. Mm -hmm. None. There's not a report on the news. No, she doesn't look in the paper. Missing black man or missing garbage sweeper. You know, context again. No, context. no one says shit. The probably the most horrific death in here. Occurs with a guy who, <laughs> a man of God, <laughs> the, or he, he thought God could save him. The God, the guy said, "I don't want nothing to do with this dog." <laughs> when yeah, not that, not with that dog. He's a killer. You kidding me? <laughs> this this man, I mean, this is a man that went to church like on Wednesday. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this this dude went to church on Wednesday during the day. Walking down the street, got his new suit on, man. Got some new yeah, shoes. I thought he was going to a job or a job interview or something. No, that dude came from church, man. Got some. Got this dude. Now I'm looking at this. Uh, so this guy just got through talking to Jesus. Got some new shoes on. Thought today was gonna be a good day. Thought everybody did, yeah, and he's like, "Oh shit!" Come on, dog. Leave him alone. God damn! When I have to wear my church shoes today. <laughs> shit. <laughs> ow, ow, oh. He said, "Shit, if I had my Jordans on today, this <laughs> so never happen." I know who'll save me. Jesus will save me. <laughs> Je Jesus, open up, Jesus. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, but I know you got hot dogs in your pocket somewhere. Ah, ah. <laughs> and the funny thing is. I love being like, shot with this scene too. <laughs> man, that that I told y'all about this scene before. 
That dog mauled his ass so bad, Jesus couldn't even look. I know, <laughs> Jesus was like, I want nothing to do with this. And Jesus wept. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus said, I don't want shit to do with this. Oh, funny enough, that's actually St. Francis, the patron saint of animals. <laughs> that is. Oh. And Rich is like, I'm not seeing nothing. I'm just seeing all my bird friends right now. Mm-mm. He's like, shit. I don't my know name dogs. is Bennett, and I ain't in it. Yeah, dogs like me. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know what you said to that motherfucker, but hey, that's between y'all. Uh, Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I'm St. Paul. That's between y'all. <laughs> I, man, they never mentioned the dog was bionic because you saw him. It's like he jumped from across the street on that dude's back. Sure did. Good leap, man. Yeah. Man, the, the, the power of racism. <laughs> it's strong. <laughs> the power of racism compels me. I mean, it Jesus, propels me. Jesus can't beat that. Yeah. Should have had a sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> Again, speaking about uh, putting black people in non- Stereotypical roles. I like the way Sam Fuller hired this guy who came straight off the set of Roots. Yeah. What the hell you mean, huh? You see this guy, lady? You see this goddamn scar? <laughs> Dude got on overall. He's been. He was in the field. Yeah. Got on overalls. Mm. <laughs> Greasy. <laughs> cool, cool scar though. Yeah. yeah. He peeled off. Yeah, <laughs> looks like a polar bear. <laughs> it does look, looks like a seal. <laughs> it does, yeah. You see, there's the head. There's the flapper. <laughs> so this, so Christy McNichols, man. Hmm. Oh shit, man. There we go. Christy McNichols, man. She was all before talking about. No, he's a good dog. He just needs love. You can help him. Help him. But once she figured out, shit, he keeps murdering people. They can. The law might be on my ass. That's she, gonna come back on me. She, <laughs> she turned. She turned on his ass quick. She th- she flung that dog under the bus. He just killed a man. There is no way you can cure that dog. I want you to shoot him now before he kills more blacks. He, he's like, where, bitch. What I've been trying to tell you? <laughs> yeah. Where where were you an hour ago? Yeah. And and six black people ago. Yeah. Wow. It only took you about five maulings to see what we were talking about. Th- this is the part where it falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the yeah. This, this is where this is he did, all these black people have been eaten and killed and mauled, and afterwards they were like, "The dog needs to die," but we can help him. Yeah, you know, you know let's see what happens. Tell you what, and tell you what, we actually made a little progress today. Let's celebrate. Five minutes ago, they he was just crying about that dude getting ate up in church. Five minutes. ago. Oh, and there's also points where Mark, you're talking about this dog is a bionic dog. This so far, this dog is a bionic dog. The six million dollar dog. Yeah. He's a werewolf. <laughs> He's Jason Voorhees. They said, fuck it. Let's just make him Thor. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because they, <laughs> they make him in parts. It's that, it's that movie where the dog is smarter than, than, than you oh, know, yeah. the average dog. <laughs> White <Yes>. power! <laughs> <laughs> White power I activate! Power. <laughs> that dog makes a big, bigger eg- exit than Thor does, man. <laughs> Superhero land. That dog lit up. There. <laughs> that dog. That was, there was a power outage in the city because of that dog. Uh, today it does. It has a lower end look of a. It, except there's some cool shots in there, if not just goofy. Yeah. No, there's some really imaginative cinematography. Yeah. From the dog's that, that's some that comes in later, but the, yeah. the the whole first half it does not have that. Yeah. No. It's a. It's a. It's and, and they know. They see that the, at the time. That's why it got it made because it is a lower budget film. Mm-hmm. Seven million dollars. Mm-hmm. Seven. It was seven million dollars. Mm-hmm. It's a lower budget film, and they even said like, yeah, you know, we that during the strike, we're, you know, we don't want to spend a whole lot of money. What do we got? We'll go ahead and put the fast track on this. Uh, it hasn't dated well at all, but I will say this. It has. I don't want. To, I don't want to tell people what the end of the movie is, but I do love that last shot. Great shot. I, I think the last shot in this movie is is incredible. It's very seventies that last shot. It how, is how it's framed and everything. Yeah, yeah this movie wide, wide shot, a lot of wide shots. Yeah, the movie was filmed in nineteen eighty one. Came out nineteen eighty three when it was premiering in uh you know a, a low to no distribution. But one of the things about the film is that it does feel like a seventies film in certain parts, and the last shot feels just like in tone and in the way it was filmed. It's it's a if if you know if it, it's it, even as silly as the movie is and bad as it is in some parts, it's an impactful ending, man. I, I could see something like this, and because Gertz and I were talking about it, Gertz loves this movie, man. 
<laughs> he, he does. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> and I don't think it's a like I said. I don't think it's a bad film. There's a lot of in, of, of this movie that I like. I, I like more ideas than execution itself. And like I said, it's a product of his time. But we were talking about how Jordan Peele. This is something like maybe he could go in and do oh, a, a remake to a producer remake to. Definitely. You know, it's it's just something I could see them redoing today. He. Can, Making it an uh, updated film and much better than what he we saw. He can have the context the movie just lacked. <laughs> like the sense of repercussions, which is just not yep. throughout the film. Or then just ignoring repercussions. Like if I was looking at this today, man, I'd I like it enough to give it a high rental. Because um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I understand when this movie was made. Uh, yeah, not, not, not a fan. A few good things, but the, the stuff that I don't like far outweighs the stuff I do. But it's 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 more of a lower rental for me. Okay. Now, not, 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 I wouldn't say it's some old bullshit. It's not, it's not leaning towards that, but it, it's still a lower rental. Like, on a technical level, I really do uh, appreciate the film. I think the cinematography is very good, and I really like the score. When you get Andy Marconi, he's, he's going to do a great job. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate the earnestness of the message to a certain degree, but as everything we brought up throughout the film, it constantly and consistently undercuts itself where it just becomes goofy. And on that level, I enjoy it because I was laughing at certain scenes. They give these actors some really bad dialogue and they're doing their best to sell it, but I enjoyed it in, yeah. in, in a way. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a fun film, but not one where it's like, Hey, if you're going to go in there trying to seek a message out there. This, this is not the one to go to. No. I would say. So I, I'm kind of right there with you. I, I bet to give this like a solid run. Yeah. No, it's, I, I think I think it's a fun movie too, even though because it's so goofy. Is he, is he laughing? Yeah. yeah.